So, you know, that that's their sixth title in eight years. Okay, so Albirex Nikata, full full credit to you. But it, you know, it raises it, that question again. Yes, the, oh. the, the elephant in the room. Welcome back to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly. With me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Chia Han Kyung, Yahoo senior editor, and him, our old friend Daryl, Spurs fan. Hi guys, we are back for the local Singapore yeah. edition. And they've shamed me, regional shamed edition. me already with their red shirts, <laughs> making yeah, me feel very yeah. unpatriotic. It's our National Day edition, <laughs> huh? Yeah, it's very national good. National Day. <laughs> but I have to say this, you and I, we just recently went to the Singapore Festival of Football, yeah. full title, Festival. and no false modesty, I was with my daughter, I was stopped 10 times, Daryl, 10 oh, times. Big time. On the way, yeah, wait, on the way to the stadium. <laughs> It wasn't for my books, which I've written uh, many or this or that. It was yeah. because of this. And yeah. all of them wanted to talk about local football. Yep. This segment. It's this segment that this really segment. generates the, you know, we yeah. love the EPO and it's great. Uh, but it's the local segment yeah. that really triggers interest. Because, you know, I mean, Singapore football is not in the best of state right now. So there's a lot of things to talk about. A lot of things that, you know, you should, you want to get off your chairs. Mm. So I mean, I mean, keep going for this season. We welcome all the readers' comments from you yep. all. Send them in. Talk about whatever local football, EPL football. Uh, we'll we'll try to read as much as uh, the best best of them all. Yeah, hundred percent. In yeah. fact, it's, it's thanks to you that a we're back for a second season, and b look, we have a sponsor. The wonderful folks at Starhub have sponsored our podcast. Thanks to you watching us every week on all our multitude of platforms. Yeah, and we've even got a special offer for this episode. Yep. Ooh. So you know. Premier League season is coming. So you sign up for the Premier Plus package, 25, 22, cost about 25, 22. And guess what? You get a one year free broadband. How good is this? It still deal? upsets me. Yeah, because it's, it's such really a good deal. Yeah. So $25 and 22 yeah. cents. Yeah. You get so you the get Premier League. And Why didn't they bring this out? Free broadband. Why didn't they bring this out? Before. Yeah. Before, yeah. before I started the gonna season. Sign up. I'm going to buy a million dollar HDB and I'm going to sign up for this. Yeah, you're going to keep me going. You're going to wave the deal in front of me because mine's too expensive. So it's a great deal. And thanks for following us. As Hank Yong said, keep all your comments coming. Now, in the off season, or why our off season, the biggest issue by far mm. was the new recommendations after the Sea Games yeah. debacle. If, if you have, if you've forgotten, we just, we lost to Malaysia seven 0 at the Sea Games. I don't oh. think anyone's forgotten. <laughs> I don't think anyone's forgotten. <laughs> seven that. Kosong yeah. lives on. So so you know, oh. after about a month, a month or so, the FAS finally came out with a a, t a list of ten recommendations on how to improve um, our preparations for this. Um, for these major events, major competitions. Fair enough, I think I think it's about time they, they do it for every single uh major competition they go. After that, they should have done a post-mortem every time. Although I I I I look at the recommendation, it's like, oh, um, you need at least two weeks of preparations for for any kind of major competitions. I mean, all of us are the reporters were thinking like, um, Shouldn't this already be a given? Yeah. 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 Uh, you need a dietitian. You need an analyst for the team. Well, you mean you don't have it in the first place? It's like, it, it, these are already the bare minimum you yeah. want for all your national team, whatever age group it is. Your national team should already build in these things. And okay, now it's about, now it's about better late than never. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the yeah, way to yeah, look at it. Are yeah. you half empty or are you half full? Yeah. I try to be half full on this podcast yeah. when I can. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, under 23 squad will henceforth focus only on two priority yeah. tournaments, okay. which is the SEA Games and the AFC under 23. Which is the reason why they pull out of uh, September's Asian Games. So yeah, we'll enough. come to the Asian yeah. Games, but I can see the logic of that. Mm. Dietitian, yes. Mm. Analyst, yes. Two weeks preparation before major tournaments, yes. These things should be in place, right? Yeah. 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 But okay, now now they're finally in place. Mm. You you say okay, let's 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 go again. Yeah. But no, you you kind of wish that these things have been in place long time ago. But well, the, the, that's the thing about football, uh, football association of Singapore. Um, the the president was saying during the press con, say no, we are learning. We we want we are a learning association. We want mm. to. We, 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 we want to uh, learn along the way. Mistakes will be made, um, but we'll keep learning along the way. And obviously, this this is a this is a 
fair enough. You, we can we can't always bl- keep doing the blaming game here and there. You know, blame here, blame there. But the thing is that we are already at such a low point in our national football. You know, we have already fallen quite a bit. If you keep on saying we keep learning as we make mistakes, how much more mistakes can you afford? Mm. I mean, you can't say, oh, this one, we can let you make mistakes. You know I mean? there, there are some places, there are some some moments where you say, we can't afford to make mistakes anymore. We need to get things right, right from this point onwards. We need to get things right, get the next decision right, get the next decision right. And then that's only, only then can, can the local football scene, national football scene, Go somewhere. Yeah. I think that's fair, yeah. Daryl. I mean, yeah. I don't know what you think. I, I take your point. Yes, we learn from mistakes, but I think your point is at some point, we have to stop making mistakes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we can't keep saying we're going to learn with the last mistake and we're going to learn from the last mistake. At some point, you've got to stop making mistakes and, and start having solutions and victories yeah. and progress. Yeah. What do you think, Daryl? Yeah, I think um, some of the points that they outline here – Maybe it's a bit shocking. You would have thought that, hey, all this would already be in place, you know, uh, like monitoring players' diets, uh, having two yep. weeks preparation. Like you would think all this would be in place because, I mean, we see it like um, easy example is like England, we know when the season ends and then before they prepare for Euros or World Cup, like they have, you know, three weeks a month to prepare and we would think that uh, FAS and or our local they complaining teams, they have not enough time. Yeah. With, yeah. So we would assume that, you know, FAS has already been doing this, but okay, we start at, uh, this point and then we see hopefully we can get uh, improvement mm. in terms of the results or maybe even the outcome so some of these things can be hard to to judge like they could still end up doing poorly at the sea games level but then the players could be improving i don't know so you yeah. know it'll be, it'll be difficult and um hopefully hopefully things will get better in the next mm. you know we've got to give it some time so how you four years yeah, it might take two to four years uh, at I least. Hope, I hope the fans will have patience. You know, yeah. we could we could be, we could lose a bit, a lot more before we start to win again. That's that's the thing. We hope. Which brings yeah. us to the most contentious aspect mm. of this revamp, if you like, which right. is you alluded to just now that the Singapore under twenty twos will not compete in the upcoming Asian Games yeah. because they're prioritizing the Sea Games mm. and the AFC Asian Cup qualifies now we may disagree slightly on this but i think the consensus seems to be tell me if i'm wrong why can't we just go is that fair i think yeah. people feel like they should go yeah the reason you give is that you know uh, places too much pressure because i believe the asian qualifiers asian uh, under 23 qualifiers just happens around the same time as the asian games and if you want to you know finish this the, the tournament and then go to the next tournament, it might be a bit taxing on the young players. Mm. That, that That is probably their rationale. And okay, you sort of see it. And then Asian Games is not a FIFA sanctioned mm. uh, tournament. Mm. It's just an Asian Games thing. So that might be take the thing. But also, I mean, um, I do believe players want to play a lot of games yep. and then to, to yank it out right at the end when, when you, you wanted to get them to go in the first place and then just to yank them out because you had a bad C games, um, it's the, the players must be feel must be feeling quite disappointed. Mm. But if 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 it turns out that um the under twenty three qualifiers um they do they they do better than expected, so maybe they will be justified. That's the key. Yeah. I agree with that one hundred percent. Because on this one, I I can see both sides. Mm. I can mm. look. Of course. Any tournament experience is, is is theoretically better than no yeah. tournament experience. So I get that part. I do. But Singapore is not in that position. Whether we like it or not, Singapore football is in the doldrums. Beggars can't be choosers here. And this is one example where I think we can't run before we can walk. We need to start doing better in the sanctioned events. Yep the C games, the AFC Cup qualifiers, yep. the FIFA sanctioned events, rather than the Asian games, which isn't FIFA sanctioned, as mm-hmm. you mentioned, which therefore means it overlaps with, with the, other tournaments. Yep. You're going to stretch resources, mm. which we don't have. Mm. You've got the greater risks of injuries, which we can't afford. So on this one, I'm willing to give the FAS the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, me too. Pull out of the Asian games, but your caveat is a good one. We must see yeah. progress soon yep. to justify this quite radical decision. Yeah, it is. It is. Hopefully, the that uh, that's, as I say, the under twenty three Asian Cup qualifiers that that will be key. 
Yeah. But let yeah. us know what you think. As always, your comments matter to the podcast. We do read them all and we share the best ones on the show every week. Mm -hmm. So share all of your comments should the Lions pull out of the Asian Games. Was it the right decision? Let us know at... Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, Singapore Premier League. It's coming to a close. We've only got four or five games left. Yeah, three or four. Three or four. Three or four, three or four, four games yeah. left. What we hope was going to be a very close three-horse race has petered out a yeah, bit. Yeah, kind of, kind of, yeah. In the middle of the season, everybody was saying, wow, that it was is a, close. It was close, yeah. you not know, like one or two points between LB Rex, Nigata, Lion City Sailors and Tampines. And, Tampines, yeah. and that, middle, that middle stretch was, wow. I was like, quickly, every week, every week after the match, I was like, what was the score, what's the score? But... Um, sort of like, you know... When it I came mean, to squeaky bum now, time. Squeaky bum time, yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> Um, I, I think LB Rex, they have such a consistently winning culture in their in the club that, you know, mm. they eke out, they get the wins. They get the important wins. They beat Lion City Sailors. Mm. And then they just just happened last Friday, they beat Tampines Rovers 6-3. Yeah. Big score line. They they were like 2 0 ahead. And then Tampines claw back to 2 all. And then they went ahead again. And then they just went back ahead hit again. And then it's just it's, 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 their, it's their consistent uh, culture of, of winning and the group. So so uh, it, it looks like it's LB Rex. It's not again. mathematically over. Yeah, it's not it's mathematically only five points. Yeah, I say still, only five yeah. points. It's, it's a lot. unlikely they will yeah. lose a lot more. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that that's their sixth title in eight years. Okay, so LB Rex, Nikata, full, full credit to you. But, it, you know... It raises it, that question again. Yes, the, oh, the, the, the elephant in the room. You know, the foreign elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. Albirax <laughs> Nikata are still, after all, a feeder club for the Albirax hmm. Nikata club in J-League. These are, these are players who come from that, that, that club. Yes, there are a few local players in that in the team right now. Hassan Sani. Um, I think... Adam Swandi? Ad, no, no. Adam Swandi is in Iron City Sellers. But Hassan Sani and Adele Winder Singh, some youngsters, yeah. Nikki, Nikki Singh. Yeah, Nikki Singh. So, so, but still Jerry are predominantly Japanese team. Mm. So, they've been keep, keep winning and then try, some, try, try as the local teams might, only Lion City Sellers have broken that spell amid these eight years. So, you know, it begs the question again, the, the things that can, can, can our local sites ever catch up with the mm. excellence of LB Rex. Yeah. Well, it's the same old thing with Singapore football. You know, I end up sounding like Yoda. <laughs> pra patience we must practice, <laughs> right? You can't Goodness. have, you can't say I want to emulate the Japanese mm. without following the Japanese model, mm. which is patience. We all know about the 100-year plan for the Japanese football. Mm. Alburix Nagata didn't happen overnight. Nope. They've got a long established coaching and networking uh, model mm -hmm. in Singapore. They get the best of the best of the young players, the college boys, come in. down from uh, Japan into Singapore. They blood them into the side and the best ones go back mm. into the J League. It's a very well honed machine. So it's very hard for us to say, okay, Lion City Sailors, you've got the money. We expect you to emulate the Japanese overnight. It does take a little bit more patience. Yes, there's an argument to be made that Lion City Sailors have invested a lot and maybe could have expected a bit more for maybe their they resources. Could, they could invest the pre-season, the middle of the season, they sack their coach and then yeah. join new players. That also They're takes, still looking yeah, for stability yeah, and a consistency. Bit unstable, yeah, but so if you want the Japanese model, them. you need the patience of the Japanese. Yeah, yeah. A similar situation to the under 22s and 23s. Okay, give them the benefit of the doubt. But realistically, next season... I think it's very reasonable to ask the Lion City Sailors. Oh, you're Tampines, yeah. And Tampines, mm. but particularly, well, yeah, those two in particular with their established stadiums, their infrastructure, their resources, they've got to really start pushing them a lot closer. And look, simple, sign better players. I mean, not every player at Lion City <laughs> Sailors has been Maxime Lestien. Yeah. They need more like Lestien. If you recruit like that, yeah. the title race will be a lot closer. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tampines, for instance, they recruited very well this season. They got Faris Rumley, mm. um, and then got the young young players like Glenn Quay, uh, Joel Chu, and and you know the team just gelled from the start. And then they 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 
lost just once in the opening 20 games or whatever. But no, eventually injuries and a bit of indiscipline. So it cost them some red cards, you know. Mm. That cost them in the final round, final stretch of the season. But, you know, for, for Templis, a side which is not as rich as Lion City mm. Sailors, this that side recruited well, had a very uh, outstanding coach, young coach some more. So they, they, they look like they could have done, they could have been the one to mm. out, uh, overtake LB Rex, but no, things didn't work out. But that, that should be the template for other clubs to follow. Yeah. Templates should be. not Because Lion City Sailors, Sailors they're are private all, model. They're, they're yeah. private model. Yeah. Unless unless you go private, yeah. then you can we compare. Could, we could do that. Well, we yeah. know that's another, we've yeah. said before. <laughs> Hello, blue chip companies who are watching. <laughs> Pocket change will take care of each and every one of the Singapore Premier League sides. We don't have to say it every yeah. week, yeah. but we probably will. We know that's the real answer. Yeah. Singaporean sponsors and investors, yeah. local football. Yeah. You all uh, queued up for the Singapore Festival yeah. of Football yeah. for a week-long <laughs> event. Put some of that money, if you can, into local football next season. And that will help with some of the recommendations as well yeah, because yeah. young boys need regular football and they need a good level of competition. So more money into the local clubs. As always, let us know what you think. Send us all your comments. But as it's the first week, we're going to finish on positive yeah. stories. Make Lots you, make of you positive feel good. stories. Make you feel good as you leave the podcast. Positive football stories. Yeah. What should we do first? My old friend, what should we do? Daniel Tan. I want to do Daniel Tan first. Do it. Daniel Tan, Singapore's first, Asia's first female footballer to join an elite football club has scored her first goal yep. for Borussia Dortmund. First start, first goal. Fantastic. Yeah. So he just, she's, well, trailblazer yep. in her own right now. And the whole women's football scene in Singapore is just starting to bubble. You yeah, know? great. You know, Women's Football League, the Women's Premier League is going strong in the second season. The the Women's National Team played a friendly in, in against Pakistan in Jalan Besar, won one nil. And I think they are going to take part in the Asian Games. Yeah, and they are going to take part yeah. in the Asian Games. They are not, they are not like the Fantastic. men's team. So everything is going well. And then, you know, and then just, just this, I think on Monday, um, the Unleash the Raw project announced uh, overseas football scholarships. Right? The yeah. first ever overseas football scholarships. And surprisingly, uh, for me, for me, it was a surprise. Six girls got a scholarship, only two boys. Mm. So, you know, this does this mean that, you know, Singapore is like looking, maybe women's football is like better bet to qualify for the Women's World Cup? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Philippines and Vietnam and Thailand have done it in the region. Women's World Cup qualified. Hmm. May Philippines have even won, be defeated New Zealand 1 0 in the World Cup. I think it makes sense, yeah. Daryl. When you look at the rapid progress of the women's game in England, hmm. in other parts of Europe, in the Philippines, as you mentioned, and also in Singapore, yeah. where globally speaking, the talent pool is still smaller hmm. than the men's smaller, game. Yeah. That's statistically the case you've got more chance of progressing and developing faster in the women's game than you have the men's. Yeah. So frankly speaking, if I'm a sponsor watching this or an investor in the game in any kind, I'm probably putting my money in the women's game <laughs> <laughs> because there's more chance of Danelle Tan hitting the heights than there is of possibly a Singaporean male footballer at the moment. I think women's football is where it's at. What do you think, yeah, Daryl? I think definitely women's football, it seems like, the gap isn't that wide mm. uh, compared to the men's football. I mean, uh, women's football, definitely there's hope for Singapore. Um, can see a few of the players doing very well. And, you know, all the best to them. Let's see how mm. far we can go. De I tell yeah. you, Danelle Tan, I met Danelle for yeah. the first time a few weeks ago. I interviewed her. I've never met anyone like it. If you ever wanted a symbol or a reason why we have to send these young kids overseas with scholarships at the earliest opportunity, she's the reason why. Because she's been overseas, she was in England, now she's in Germany. Mm. Because she's been overseas for a while, her resilience, her fortitude, her independence, her drive is like nothing I've ever seen in an 18-year-old, male or female, Singaporean or anything else. I've never seen anything like it. And when I asked her the question, I said to Danelle, what would the usual thing? I said, what would you say to Kiasu parents <laughs> or, or kids out yeah. there who want to follow in your footsteps? She said, I'd say to every young footballer listening to this, 
Put yourself in a position where your parents can't say no. Oh, yeah. wow. This kid's 18. She gives me goosebumps. <laughs> she says, work hard enough so your parents can't say See? no. Go to them and say, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm achieving. I'm going to go and play for Borussia Dortmund. And no Kiasu parent in the world can say no. That's the future for Singapore football. Wow. Danel Tan, man. Yeah. She's a trail blazer. What a way to end this show. Yeah. Do you think the women's game is the future for Singapore? How far do you think Danel Tan can go? Send us all of your comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore M1 on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Almost. almost. Brilliant. <laughs> and also, Put yourself in a position where you can't say no. And that's a terrible segue to the Starhub special <laughs> offer. <laughs> yeah. What about unbeatable deal, right? Yes. Yeah. Sign, sign up for the Premium Plus pa package for just $25.22. And you get one year free broadband. Can't say no. Can't say no. Can't, can't say, say no. no. Brilliant. Thanks, Daryl. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you, yeah. guys. Looking forward to the new season. Absolutely. Yeah. And as and always... also the climax, huh? local football. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Let's see if there can be a few upsets. Get down to a local game if you mm. can. Thank you always for watching us. We'll be back same time, same place next year. Next year? Next, next year. Next week. Next whoa, week. Whoa. Next week. Next week. And remember, in the words of Danel Tan, work hard and put yourself in a position where people can't say no. Yeah. Inspirational stuff, right? Inspirational. All right, yeah. guys, take care. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Next week. <laughs>